When it comes to batteries in Australia, there's currently one clear winner. It's Tesla. Tesla here, Tesla there, Tesla everywhere. Today, we meet a German battery that would surely love to be the second most popular battery in Australia. A bit like the Pepsi to Coca-Cola, because I'm sure Pepsi still makes a tidy profit. Meet one of the challenges for battery's favorite title, the Sun and Battery. Okay, I'm here at the Sonnen stand. Being German, I know Sonnen is the sun. This is a battery, isn't it? Dude, he's a genius. Now you got a new model here because I know the previous Sonnen battery was a little bit bigger. Tell me a bit about that new model. Um, so the main one about this is it's IP rated, so IP65. So it's the first Sonnen manufactured battery that could be installed outside. And it's this one here is particularly 10 kilowatt hours usable energy. So it's just one size. And are you finding that 10 kilowatt hour is the right size for a lot of Australian home families? Uh, we think it is at, at the moment. You can also you know, put multiple batteries in as well if the customer needs more storage. So you can put a second battery next to it as well if you need to. The, the benefit of this one though is that we can create a micro grid if there's a, a blackout or a grid outage with a third party PV inverter by providing a false grid reference or a 50 hertz grid reference to the inverter. So in a blackout this will enable you to still generate solar um, using your solar PV and your solar panels um, and supply the designated circuit and recharge the battery as well. So it does have, have an inverter then on the inside? Yep definitely so there's a, a, a inverter here um, right. that, that does the battery charging and also the, the integrated backup is all inside here as well. But it's an all-in-one system so you know it's much easier to install for the, for the installer as well. What do I have to do to kill a battery? Mainly batteries get killed by you know, how quickly you charge and discharge them and how deep you discharge the, the battery is, is what affects it. Um, so I don't run it down to zero every time, is it? Exactly, yes. Our warranty is quite strong. It's 10 years or 10,000 cycles. So that would enable you to cycle this battery 2.7 times a day and still get to your 10 year warranty. The other thing that we do, which is different to a lot of other batteries, is we use the LFP chemistry as well. So it's much safer um, and long lasting as well. So the disadvantage is it's a bit bigger and heavier, so it's not as slimline, but obviously in a, in a compact unit that's attached to the side of the house, then it's, it's fine. Let's say if you only cycle it one time a day, potentially that you're gonna get more than 10 years out of it? So I won't say that because of Australian consumer laws, but what I will say is that 10 years or 10,000 cycles, whichever comes first, you will have a minimum capacity of 80% in the battery is what we warranty. So obviously if you're cycling it less, then you would expect to have more in it at the end of that time. When would you say, just from a user experience, that somebody says, oh, I've had this with this battery, now it discharges too quickly. You remember those phones? After three, four years, you charge it and literally you have a charger up your backside. Yep. What's the percentage where people start getting a bit tired? Is it 50% or 40 or 60? What's the number? Uh, well, yeah, we don't really, we haven't really seen anything like that. We do, uh, monitoring provides the customer with a cycle count on their, on their app so they can see exactly how many cycles they've done and where they're at in their, in their warranty. And all the, all the monitoring shows the, you know, the capacity that they have during the day as well. So yeah. now. The one big thing is, the question that everybody wants to know, why and when are batteries getting cheaper? Well, we haven't seen a decrease in price in, in the components that we use. So you know, lithium ion phosphate, which is a chemistry we use, is a bit more expensive than the manganese cobalt, for example, because they use that more in, in motor vehicles. You know, there's been supply chain challenges and all those sorts of things. So yeah, I, I don't think you'll see the, the drop in batteries prices alone, like, like we have in solar panels and, and everything else. Is it also partly because really some of the same chemistry goes now into EVs and that is exploding and so you're kind of really the small brother competing with the big yeah, brother? Well, well, I think we are as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, there's probably more, more value in, in uh, the, the batteries going to EVs than there are to the home storage. Last one then, really. I always argue when people say, oh, the ROI on a battery and this and that. I think people have been spoiled by the solar ROI. And if you now build a new home, my argument would be you'd be a silly sausage not to get a battery already because down the track you're going to get an EV and this is how you keep the solar you make during the day available to put into your EV at night. What are your key arguments why somebody should buy a battery? Uh, well, it, uh, there's a few. So one is the, the value of that excess energy that you sell back into the grid that these days is very minimal. So that makes the, you know, the, the money or the energy inside the battery um, much more valuable. Uh, so therefore that improves the, the payback time. We also have other products for the supplied VP or um, grid services through through other products that we have that can provide more value back to the customer as well. And I think more energy independence is the key as well. So being able to have backup uh, power and, and independence from the grid and, and um, helping with that grid stability are the other reasons that you would do it. I know of a particular instance where somebody had a blackout and then they rang the battery guy the next day and were very upset because the battery was really not backing the house up for longer than three hours. So when the guy investigated a bit more, they were a bit bored so they thought they would bake a cake. Well, I mean, the idea would be to obviously if you 
you've got a blackout to try and make that power last as long as you can. So the obvious choice would be to yeah to minimise what you're using during that bit of time to, to make sure that you've got power. And you don't know how long the blackout's going to be for as well. So at least with this one, you can, you know, if it's an extended period of time, you've got an opportunity for the battery to recharge itself, even though the grid is out. And like recharge out of the solar, is it? The solar, that's right, yeah. Um, and you can also, there's a, um, you can change the backup buffer as well. So if you know you're going to have an outage, then you can change or increase that backup buffer to hold more energy in the battery and then take it off uh, after the event as well. So, but yeah, definitely, yeah, we would recommend yeah, minimising your usage during a blackout so that it, uh, you've, you've got that power for longer. So if you're bored in a blackout, don't bake a cake. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.